What is SQL Server DBA? SQL Server is a RDBMS, Relational Database Management System, from Microsoft designed for the enterprise environment. SQL Server adds a number of features to standard SQL, including transaction control, exception and error handling, row processing, and declared variables. DBA stands for Database Administrator. A database administrator directs or performs all activities related to maintaining a successful database environment. The main responsibilities include designing, implementing, and maintaining the database system, establishing policies and procedures pertaining to the management, security, maintenance, and use of the database management system, and training employees in database management and use. What are SQL Server DBA Responsibilities? Installation, Administration and Maintenance of SQL Server Instances Setup Test, Dev, Staging, and Production Environments Create Users and Assign Permissions based on the level of database access the user would need Create Linked Servers to SQL Servers and other databases such as Oracle, Access, and Informix etc. Design Database Backup and Restoration Strategy once created the database backups, monitor those backups are being performed regularly. From time to time recover the databases to a specific point of time, as per the requests. Set up high availability as part disaster recovery strategy for the databases. Troubleshoot various problems that arise in a day-to-day -day work and fix the issues. Monitoring and performance tuning, physical server level, database level and query tuning. Documenting major changes to the SQL servers. Apply service packs. What is the difference between clustered and non-clustered indexes in SQL server? Indexes are used to speed up query process in SQL server, resulting in high performance. They are similar to textbook indexes. In textbooks, if you need to go to a particular chapter, you go to the index. Find the page number of the chapter and go directly to that page. Without indexes, the process of finding your desired chapter would have been very slow. There are two types of indexes. Clustered. Clustered indexes sort and store the data rows in the table or view based on their key values. These are the columns included in the index definition. There can be only one clustered index per table because the data rows themselves can be sorted in only one order. The only time the data rows in a table are stored in sorted order is when the table contains a clustered index. When a table has a clustered index, the table is called a clustered table. If a table has no clustered index, its data rows are stored in an unordered structure called a heap. Non-clustered Non-clustered indexes have a structure separate from the data rows. A non-clustered index contains the non-clustered index key values and each key value entry has a pointer to the data row that contains the key value. The pointer from an index row in a non-clustered index to a data row is called a row locator. The structure of the row locator depends on whether the data pages are stored in a heap or a clustered table. For a heap, a row locator is a pointer to the row. For a clustered table, the row locator is the clustered index key. You can add non-key columns to the leaf level of the non-clustered index to bypass existing index key limits, and execute fully covered, indexed, queries. For more information, see Create Indexes with Included Columns. For details about index key limits see Maximum Capacity Specifications for SQL Server. Both clustered and non-clustered indexes can be unique. This means no two rows can have the same value for the index key. Otherwise, the index is not unique and multiple rows can share the same key value. For more information, see Create Unique Indexes. Indexes are automatically maintained for a table or view whenever the table data is modified. Why SQL Server is better than other databases? We have number of products in market. But if I have the chance to choose one of them I will choose SQL Server because According to the 2005 survey of Wintercorp, the largest SQL Server DW database is the 19.5 terabytes. It is a database of a European bank. High Security
it is offering high level of security. Speed and Concurrency SQL Server 2005 system is able to handle 5,000 transactions per second and 100,000 queries a day and can scale up to 8 million new rows of data per day. Finally more technical peoples are available for SQL Server when we compare to any other database. So that we can say SQL Server is more than enough for any type of application. Explain the different types of indexes available in SQL Server. Clustered and non-clustered indexes. There are other types of indexes such as unique, XML, spatial and filtered indexes. What is SQL dump? Have you ever dealt with this? When SQL Server is crashed or in hung state due to a memory slash disk CPU problems it creates a SQL dump file. A dump files is a file containing a snapshot of the running process, in this case SQL Server, that includes all of the memory space of that process and the call stack of every thread the process has created. There are two major types of dump files. Full dump, it contains entire process space and takes a lot of time and space. Mini dump, it's a smaller file contains the memory for the call stack of all threads. The CPU registers and information about which modules are loaded. Explain how database snapshots works. Let me explain what happens when we create a database snapshot. It creates an empty file known as sparse file for each source database data file. Uncommitted transactions are rolled back, thus having a consistent copy of the database. All dirty pages will be returned to the disk. The user can query the database snapshot. Initially the sparse file contains an empty copy of source database data file. Snapshot data points to the pages from source database data file. When any modification occurred, insert slash delete slash update, on source database, all modified pages are copied to the sparse file before the actual modification. That means the sparse file contains the old, point in time data when the time the snapshot taken. Now if you query the snapshot all modified pages are read from sparse file and remaining all unchanged pages are read from the original, source database, data file. What are the primary differences between an index reorganization and an index rebuild? A reorganization is an online operation by default, a rebuild is an offline operation by default. A reorganization only affects the leaf level of an index. A reorganization swaps data pages in place by using only the pages already allocated to the index. A rebuild uses new pages, allocations. A reorganization is always a fully logged operation. A rebuild can be a minimally logged operation. A reorganization can be stopped mid-process and all completed work is retained. A rebuild is transactional and must be completed in entirety to keep changes. How many different types of pages exist in SQL Server? Data Index Text, Image, Lob, Row Underscore Overflow, XML GAM, Global Allocation Map SCAM, Shared Global Allocation Map PFS, Page Free Space I am Index Location Map BCM Bulk Change Map DCM Differential Change Map Do you know about Resource Database? All system objects are physically stored in Resource Database and logically available on every database. Resource Database can faster the service packs or upgrades. What is a Trace Flag? Trace Flag in SQL Server is to change certain behavior. You can think of them as an if condition in SQL Server. One of the most common heard, used trace flag is 1222, used for deadlock graph printing in ARALROG. You can imagine it is below. If, trace underscore flag underscore 1222 underscore enabled equals equals true. Print underscore deadlock underscore graph underscore and underscore error log. Trace flags are used to temporarily set specific server characteristics or to switch off a particular behavior. For example, if trace flag 3205 is set when an instance of SQL server starts, hardware compression for tape drivers is disabled. 
Trace flags are frequently used to diagnose performance issues or to debug stored procedures or complex computer systems. What is RAID? RAID is a disk system that contains multiple disk drives, called an array, to provide greater performance, fault tolerance, storage capacity, at a moderate cost. While configuring your server system, you typically have to make a choice between hardware RAID and software RAID for the server's internal disk drives. RAID systems are widely used as storage solutions to get the best I.O. performance, depending whether the application is write-intensive or read-intensive. DBA Ray Rankins mentions in his book that for database-related applications, in order to minimize disk head movement and maximize I.O. performance, it's a good practice to spread random I.O.s, data changes, and sequential I.O.s, for the transaction log, across different disk subsystems. I agree and endorse his view, as SQL Server, or for that matter any other database, is very much an I.O. intensive system. Trade is not a part of a database like SQL Server, implementing RAID can directly affect the way SQL Server performs. There are many RAID arrays available such as RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 3, RAID 4, RAID 5, RAID 6, RAID 10 and RAID 01. What is the difference between memory and disk storage? Memory and disk storage both refer to internal storage space in a computer. The term memory usually means RAM, random access memory. The terms disk space and storage usually refer to hard drive storage. What is the hotfixes in patches? Hotfixes are software patches that were applied to live that is still running systems. A hotfix is a single, cumulative package that includes one or more files that are used to address a problem in a software product, that is a software bug. In a Microsoft SQL Server context, hotfixes are small patches designed to address specific issues, most commonly to freshly discovered security holes. What are the different authentication modes in SQL Server and how can you change authentication mode? SQL Server has two authentication modes, Windows Authentication and SQL Server and Windows Authentication Mode also referred as Mixed Mode. To change the authentication mode, read one of my blogs Changing SQL Server Authentication Mode. What the different types of replication and why are they used? There are basically three types of replication, snapshot, transactional, and merge replication. The type of replication you choose depends on the requirements and or the goals one is trying to achieve. For example snapshot replication is useful only when the data inside the tables does not change frequently and the amount of data is not too large, such as a monthly summary table or a product list table etc. Transactional replication would be useful when maintaining a copy of a transactional table such as sales order tables etc. Merge replication is more useful in case of remote distributed systems where the data flow can be from multiple sites, for example sales done at a promotional event which might not be connected to the central servers always. What is a system database? System databases are the default databases that are installed when the SQL server is installed. Basically there are four system databases, master, msdb, tempdb and model. It is highly recommended that these databases are not modified or altered for smooth functioning of the SQL system. What is a user database? A user database is a database that we create to store data and start working with the data. What are the different SQL server versions you have worked on? The answer would be depending on the versions you have worked on. I would say I have experience working in SQL Server 7. SQL Server 2000, 2005, 2008 and 2012. If you have worked only the some version be honest in saying that, remember, no one would be working on all versions, it varies from individual to individual. How do you troubleshoot errors in SQL Server agent job? Inside SFMS, in Object Explorer under SQL Server agent look for job activity monitor. The job activity monitor displays the current status of all the jobs on the instance. Choose the particular job which failed, right click and choose view history from the drop down menu. The execution history of the job is displayed and you may choose the execution time, if the job failed multiple times during the same day.
There would information such as the time it took to execute the job and details about the error occurred. Subscribe to our channel, Interview Gig. Visit our website for more articles and interview questions and answers. www.interviewgig.com Like, share and comment. Don't forget to click the subscribe button. Click the bell button for latest updates.